Trek Geeks Podcast Network and the Divine Treasury are proud to have Fansets as its presenting sponsor. Stay tuned for a special discount code worth 10% off your order at fansets.com. Fansets, our pins have character. So, Mike, I know we have this, you know, this new idea to do this show here. And what we want to tell, tell our listeners is this is going to be another special feature of the Divine Treasury. Um, we, we are going to be releasing this regular episode in our normal feed, but look for this as exclusive content for the app in that 15 minute or less format where we're going to be reviewing products, new items that we get, maybe having some dialogue, maybe having a guest on there, but we're going to do it in that 15 minute or less format. Um, and it's going to be exclusive to the Trek Geeks app, which is now available on, on Google, Google Play and on the Apple Store. Let's run a quick level three diagnostic just to be sure. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special supplementary edition of the Divine Treasury. We're calling this the Level 3 Diagnostic, where we're going to start looking into different products and doing reviews on them. And for our first episode, we have Kyle Hadiniak from Trek News to join us, and we're going to consider the Lower Decks Blu-ray release. Yeah, I... I was almost tongue-tied there. The Blu-ray release. I thought I said the blue lay. Uh, so we're already having to edit for quality assurance. So the Lower Decks Blu-ray release that came out, uh, it's about a week ago now, right, Kyle? Uh, yeah, a week, week and a half, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. And, you know, <laughs> time uh, is relative, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, know, I know it wasn't that long for me. Uh, mine came a day late via Amazon, but... Uh, I, I've had the, I've had the chance to uh, I actually put it on while I'm working, uh, and I listen to the episode in the background. And when there's special features, it's like listening to a uh, a documentary. So let's get rolling. Uh, we'll start off the first thing, Kyle, since uh, you uh, you have done a review on this for TrekNews.net. Uh, we'll ask you. What does CBS have on the discs for us if we buy the physical media? Yeah, so uh, CBS, you know, didn't really pull any punches per se uh, when it came to this release. So I'm pretty happy with what's on there. So not only do you get the whole 10 episode first season, which I'll just say for the millionth time, I love Lower Decks. uh, So I was very happy to see. That, um, of course, all the episodes are there. That's kind of like the basic thing we should expect. But uh, more than that, there are so-called lower deck de- dictionaries. Lower deck. I just want to make sure I had that right. Lower dictionaries to go with I had each to episode. Re- yeah, I had to read it a few times to, to yeah, figure it's like, that one out. Is there a typo here or am I having yeah. a stroke or something? Like, what's going on? <laughs> um, so, yeah, with every episode uh, comes like a five or ten minute little featurette that talks about a certain aspect of the show. And normally it relates to the episode in question. So uh, for example, for the first episode, uh, for the pilot, you, uh, you might suspect that the lower dictionary for that episode deals with kind of the origin of lower decks, right? The origin of the show and how they developed uh, season one. And it goes on and on. And uh, I'm, I mean, you can go check out the discs to, to see what those dictionaries are all about, but I'll say just generally they are enjoyable to watch well worth the time. And the thing is there isn't a whole lot of time to invest because like I said, they're only like five or 10 minutes. So you can knock those out pretty quickly um, along with the rest of the show. Cause the show itself isn't that long either. Yeah. I was going to say too, um, you know, watching some of these, these little special features and these little clips that you just, you just kind of alluded to Kyle. Um, I have to say Mike McMahon, I really enjoy listening to him talk about the show. Um, He genuinely loves it. He genuinely loves star Trek and and he really loves what he's created. Um, And 
And I love the fact that he just loves the people that he's surrounded with as well. Um, and it was just, it, he really exuded that excitement as you were watching these special features I, for myself personally. So I really, I really love that piece. Yeah, for sure. And in lower decks is one of those shows where you could tell while you watch it, that the people who make it love what they do. And so that quality really shines through and yeah, of course, Mike, the creator, he is, uh, you know, he's like the head honcho over there for the show. And Mm -hmm. you could tell that he loves Star Trek. He loves next generation. And uh, I think we see the fruits of that labor uh, in the season. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, he was given praise to just about everybody uh, that was involved with the making of the series. Uh, He's like, he's like the, the player on a ball team, that knows the names of like the ball boys right you know he he knows everybody that's involved with this he knows them by name he knows what's going on with them uh and like you said he he's just he's totally into this it was so refreshing to hear what he had to say about his own creation uh when he was on these special features as well as though i thought it was awesome to hear the high praise that came from uh alex kurtzman and heather caden as well about lower decks the the other thing i really liked about mike too as well is he he has such a definitive vision of what he wanted the show to be right from the beginning um and even though people maybe doubted what his vision was initially or perhaps had reservations about whether it was because it was an animated series or whether it it was because it was a comedy he just really had this definitive vision of what he wanted to do, what he wanted to accomplish. And he knew exactly how to get there. Um, and, and I just think it's really shown so adequately and accurately in these special features. He just really goes step by step on, on how he got to his vision of where he wanted to be that I just, I just think it's awesome. Yeah, and it is super important to to be able to articulate that kind of vision he had because Lower Decks is such a unique show. It's only the second animated show in Star Trek's history. It's, you know, one of two half-hour shows, the other being the other animated series. And, of course, you have a type of humor in Lower Decks that you don't see anywhere else in Star Trek. So it is really a specific vision I can company we're going for. And I think they are totally aware of their little niche in the franchise and yeah, I also enjoyed hearing him talk about, you know, what it took to get there. Yeah. Even the fact that like the, one of the um, lower dictionary series sections was the, um, the actual animation process. I, I couldn't believe the fact that it took a year to do one episode. Like, I mean, obviously they're doing multiple things, but just the process that goes into that, um, was just really eye opening and 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 really cool and I love special features I love documentary stuff so that's the stuff that's the first thing and when I put a DVD or Blu-ray in that I go right to so yeah I think it too. was I think it was so well executed on these Blu-ray discs yeah for sure and for those wondering um, yeah the animation process is the title of one of the lower dictionaries is also one for art design specifically and so those two kind of go hand in hand and. Um, like the other one, like the other dictionaries, those two are um, really enjoyable to watch. And let's not forget that this show was made mostly uh, in the midst of a pandemic. So uh, to get all this content out um, on these discs uh, is is an extra special thing we got. So kudos to uh, that team for sure. Yeah, that's actually something I was going to allude to was uh, how this was all done during the pandemic you can see within the show itself or within the special features rather itself uh, during all of the interviews uh, the fact that the interviews themselves are being done over zoom or facetime or uh, whatever means is being used for it Uh, you can see that uh, just within the picture itself Uh, but then also there was um, part of the special features were don lewis was showing how they sent all kinds of uh, sound equipment to her so that she could record her voiceover in the pandemic, staying, um, you know, socially distant and making sure that everyone was well protected, but still able to get uh, everything out 
on the screen for us. And now we see the same thing with this, uh, with this release as well. Yeah. And we can't really, I mean, I, I agree that, you know, checking out these, um, hearing from the cast and crew via webcam and, you know, Skype or however they used it, um, not ideal, but it's an interesting testament <laughs> to when the show was created. So I think we'll look back on this, you know, in a few years and we'll look at these special features and see that, you know, the quality may not be great on uh, these interviews for the special features, but we'll think, oh yeah, that's right. The show was made in a pandemic. Remember that? Yeah. So that'll be interesting. Remember that. Yeah. yeah. You know, that <laughs> like one at time. <laughs> right. Like it'll be a footnote in history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things that I have been uh, very, I guess intrigued is not the word for it, but uh, it, it's been part of my whole collecting niche is the fact that uh, CBS is doing a regular DVD Blu-ray release of all of these uh, new Star Treks. Uh, so Discovery Season 1, Season 2, and Picard, and now Lower Decks. So they're doing the regular standard releases, but they're also doing the uh, Steelbook releases, which, I mean, for my money, uh, that's where I want to go to for, I mean, let's face it, most of us are doing digital media nowadays, uh, but when we're buying physical media, there's a reason behind it. We're buying it because we want to put it on display somewhere. And, you know, maybe we do actually use the discs at times, uh, but it's more because of what is uh, what's displayable about it. And the steel books, while uh, the case itself is cool, uh, you open it up and the artwork inside is really nice as well. Yeah, that was a pretty funny episode. Uh, that's the <laughs> first episode. Yeah, I think I think yeah. so with uh, with the suckling uh, spider. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so th those steel books are pretty nice, and th those will totally look good on you know a shelf if you open it up and display it. It's like a trophy, kind of, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, one of the things I know the three of us discussed before we even got on here is one of the noticeable differences about uh, this lower decks release uh, versus the three that we mentioned before this is the lack of audio commentary. Uh, on any of the episodes uh what do you guys think of that are you big audio commentary fans jamie you want to go first yeah i mean I, I do like audio commentaries um not in everything that i watch uh but once again if it's something that i'm really interested in like star trek or you know even times where i've watched star wars and things like that i i do like see, hearing some of that behind the scenes stuff but i really think it depends on who's actually doing the commentary as well Sometimes they'll pick some random person who really has nothing to do with the actual creation of uh, whatever the show or movie is. But I, I would have really liked to hear Lower Decks because, like I said, watching some of these special special features with Mike McMahon and hearing how enthusiastic he is, I would have loved to hear him do some audio commentary while watching some of these episodes for sure. Yeah, I would have loved to hear from Mike and I would have loved to hear from the cast as well because you got to figure all these folks uh, who, who in our main cast, they're all comedians in some way and, and their humor comes across in their performances on the show. And it would have been really funny to hear them talk over the episodes. And, you know, I was, I was kind of surprised that audio commentaries weren't included on this release because I mean, what do I know, but you would think putting a um, audio track to the episode would be one of the more manageable uh, special features you can do in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, but yeah, I was like, kind of wondering that myself. Yeah. I mean, who knows the circumstances? So maybe there's a good reason, but in any case, it seems like a missed opportunity. So something to be aware mm. of if you, if you do plan on picking up this release, there's just no audio commentary. Sorry. Yeah. I'm kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about this since the release, because that was one of the things that jumped off the page at me was, the lack of uh, audio commentary. And, and I'm wondering if it has to do with the fact that you're trying to sync up two or three people and something on screen to be able to get that commentary right. I, I mean, hey, I, I'm not in the business. I don't know what they do to do these audio commentaries. I'm just thinking, uh, you know, we've hopped on Discord before and watched a movie together and chatted, and it doesn't seem like it's always everything is in sync. 
So I wonder if maybe that had something to do with it. You never know. It could have just yeah. been because they're also working on season two at the same time. You never know. Maybe. And, you know, I, I bet I have a feeling I'll have, I'll make a prediction that we'll get an audio commentary on season two uh, whenever that gets released on Blu-ray. So in a year and a half or so, whenever that release comes out, uh, let's check it and see if we get some audio commentaries there. Because the fans have spoken and they're yeah. asking for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a it's a tradition in Star Trek that if the fans want something and they make enough noise and they can get it. So we'll That's see. Right. So one of the things that I loved in particular about the whole first season of Lower Decks, and I'm sure we're going to continue to see it just because of uh, Mike McMahon and staff's enthusiasm for Star Trek as a franchise. And they actually did a special feature on this was the hidden in plain sight, uh, the Easter eggs that were included uh, in this series. Uh, and get some thoughts from the two of you guys on what, uh, how it brought joy to your hearts to see these things uh, during the initial release of Lower Decks. Well, the first thing I'm going to say so that nobody else steals this is I love the Spock helmet. Oh, everybody oh. loves the Spock helmet. You yeah. have you have no idea, Jamie, because here we go. Spock yep. helmet right there. there. <laughs> and if you want a T-shirt with a Spock helmet on there, oh please boy. go to T public mm -hmm. slash Trek geeks and buy one of our new T-shirts. But anyways, I digress. But I, I love that section. Actually, to be honest with you, Mike, that was probably my favorite um, special feature section. I love Easter eggs. I love looking for Easter eggs in shows and, and the fact that like, it is so important to the creators of this show to put Easter eggs all over the place is just like, they're speaking to me specifically. Um, so I, I just, I love that whole section. In fact, like I love the whole part about the Vasquez rocks and how they were like <laughs> trying to incorporate them. In like every, as many episodes as they could. Yeah, as, as many episodes <laughs> as they could. And, you know, which with the Gorn wedding and, um, you know, e even, I, you know, just the whole TOS thing, too. When it, when <laughs> Ransom's talking about the whole TOS era. and What does he call them? Those old scientists? Yeah, those old yeah, scientists yeah. <laughs> or so, something like that. But it's just taking something that we as a fan, like our lingo, how we talk how we relate to the different shows and just boom, inserting it into the show. It, it just kind of reminds me of like Zephram Cochran from first contact talking about, are you guys some astronauts going on a star Trek? It's like that, that same type of thing. Um, so I love, that was what probably my favorite special features uh, on this, uh, this Blu-ray release. Yeah. I'm really happy. They decided to, to have a specific special feature dedicated to the Easter eggs because if you go back, uh, like for first time viewers, if you uh, check out the release, the uh, episodes on this, on these discs, go back and look at Trek News's reviews uh, that I did. I had a, I had a great time doing them. And most of those reviews, like if you were to do the total word count, I'm sure they were just the lists of Easter eggs that I saw <laughs> in the episodes. It's like, it was, it was a really fun Easter egg hunt basically. And um, yeah, I was very happy to see hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I gotta say that uh, one of it, it, what is it in uh, what's the last episode called? Broken Pieces. Is that what it was? No small parts. No small parts. Broken Pieces was from Picard. Yeah, no small Come on, parts. Come Mike. Uh, <laughs> too many parts floating around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no small parts. Uh, and there, you know, she, Mariner kicks open the, uh, the the side panels and all the contraband comes out. And it's like, uh, it's a ton of Easter eggs there. You know, it's a Batleth and it's the Spock helmet and it's all kinds of cool stuff in there. It, it's cool, though, too, because they took the Easter egg eggs thing to like a different level. And I love like how Mike McMahon was talking about, you know, in that first episode, um, Second Contact. You know, she's got now we're all thinking when we see it in her hand that she's got Romulan ale in her hand. Like we're all thinking that. But I love the fact that Mike McMahon was like, no, I'm, I like whiskey. So I'm going to call it Romulan whiskey. I'm going to say that Romulans like whiskey, too, you know, so. And it's the best in the quadrant. Yeah. So it's it's things like that that are really cool, because, like I said, the second you saw it on screen, I was thinking that's Romulan ale. I'm waiting for them to say Romulan ale. but. 
it just, you know, him putting his little humorous spin on it. Um, it was so cool. And that's a great example of how audio commentaries could have really worked for the show. Right. Uh, you know, Mike watching every episode, he can comment on anything he wants uh, across any of those 10 episodes. Yeah. But, you know, we, we got what we got and, you know, we're happy with it. Just uh, next time, Mike, we want to hear you more. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Mike McMahon, if you are listening slash watching, um, first of all, come be a guest. Um, <laughs> second of all, <laughs> we want audio commentary next time. Please, uh, please. But, but one of the other things that uh, I thought he, he made a really cool point about too, when it came to these was that they weren't putting them in just for the sake of putting them in. There was a reason behind them, a reason that could be explained through the episode, unless it was something like um, when uh, Boimler's doing his, his uh, pretend captain's log in the closet and you can see Nomad in the corner and like three quarters of it is cut off. He's like, you know, yeah, that we did for us. He's like, there's no need to explain that. That's just a fun piece that you can barely see there in the corner. But the play, the stuff that's there for everybody to see that you don't need to be like looking with a magnifying glass, there's a reason behind it. Plus, it's cool for everybody, too. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I can't wait for season two, guys. No, me neither. Uh, August 12th, psyched. I believe, was the date. Sounds familiar. Yeah. I should probably know. Looking forward to it. like to take a moment to talk about fan sets the presenting sponsor of the trek geeks podcast network and the divine treasury now by definition fan sets is a small business but really when we look at the products and the surface that they offer to us as star trek fans and star trek collectors their offerings are big um, they have all sorts of offerings from all different fandoms including scooby-doo dc comics batman 66 and harry potter but since Star Trek is the sweet spot of the Divine Treasury, we can talk about the over 300 licensed pins from badges to micro crew to what's that? Anniversary sets? Yep. Go to the fan sets website to check out all of these things that they have available. They release new pins on the 1st and the 15th of every month, and I highlighted anniversary for a reason. Available on June 1st, the Star Trek 55th anniversary pin and the Star Trek Beyond 5th anniversary pin will be available on the Fansets website. Following that, on July 1st, Star Trek IV The Voyage Home 35th anniversary and Star Trek VI, the Undiscovered Country, 30th anniversary pins will be available. And then on August 1st, the Star Trek Enterprise 20th anniversary and Star Trek First Contact 25th anniversary pins will be available on that date. But... If you don't want to wait until August to have all of those pins in your house, on your walls, however you display them, you can get them all at once on June 1st for the low price of $59.99. So all of those aforementioned pins will be available for purchase as a set on June 1st. And as a listener to the show... You can receive 10% off your next order from Fansets by using the code DIVINE, that's D-I-V-I-N-E at checkout. And remember, if you do uh, shipping in the U.S., you get free shipping on orders $30 or more. Fansets, our pins have character. And we thank Fansets for being the presenting sponsor of the Divine Treasury 
and the Trek Geeks Podcast Network. Okay, so well, we've covered a couple of the main special features here. Uh, how about some of the other special features uh, that are available on this uh, DVD, DVD Blu-ray release? Yeah, so I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite episodes uh, from season one was Crisis Point, where they just totally skewer all the movies. It's so funny. And so as a little uh, special feature on the Blu-ray here, uh, we get the Rise of Vindicta trailer. So that's that's pretty cool to check out if you uh, are like us and just love that episode. <laughs> and then we also have the longest special feature on the release, and that's uh, Faces of the Fleet. And that's described as a deep dive into the crew of the USS Cerritos, along with the producers, writers, and the cast of Lower Decks. So they highlight backstories and um, behind-the-scenes development of the season. And uh, it especially takes a look at the main characters. So if you really love the ensemble cast that Lower Decks had, um, all the ensigns, uh, take a look at Faces of the Fleet because uh, those are the faces that they pay attention to here. A couple of things that were really cool about that too is the um, they did this like really interesting poster art for every character yep. um, that was really cool. And um, I, I loved hearing Jerry O'Connell talk about uh, <laughs> Ransom and... All I got to say is double fisted Kirk punch. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Yep. yep. Yeah. If you, if you're like me and you really enjoyed the characterization of, of the lower decks cast, um, then definitely check out faces of the fleet. That's where lower decks really shown for me besides all the fun little Easter eggs, but it had its own heart and it, they, it portrayed that heart through the characters and I'm happy to see that uh, this Blu-ray touches on that aspect of the show. Yeah, it wasn't just comedy for the sake of comedy. Um, you know, yes, it was funny, but there was a Star Trek story that was interwoven throughout the whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's something else. You know, you talked about the characters, but I think a real strength of Star Trek, a real strength of like TNG was the relationships, too. And you really see through this this um, special features faces of the fleet that how the relationships of the characters really intertwine. Like, you know, you, you saw that relationship of data and Jordy and TNG and how they did that with, you know, Tendi um, and Rutherford, how they developed that. And then I also like how, how they took, you know, Tawny Newsom's um, her rehearsal. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Audition. Her. They yeah. took her audition audio and they put it next to um, Jack Quaid's to see how they would sound together. And that's how they really came up with this is the guy for us because they sound they, they sound like they could have a relationship together, a friendship together. And, and I like that, that he really focused on the relationships. And that's a tough thing to do when you're talking about an animated series and them yeah. not, not being able to interact in the same room due to a pandemic he was really able to capture those relationships, um, which to me is really the essence of Star Trek in a lot of ways. Yeah. And it's a great, Oh, sorry, Mike, go ahead. No, all I was going to say was it was, it was also cool going along the same lines of what Jamie was saying with those pieces was how um, they rolled some tape of Tawny doing improvisation uh, throughout some of this. And they allowed her to just do her thing and then kind of pick what worked best for the episode itself. Yep. There's, there's a lot of work that goes on uh, for an animated show. And I think some people may think that it's less work than a full live action show like uh, discovery, right. Or Picard, but no, I mean, these, these special features show that there's, there's a lot that even goes into a 10 episode, you know, animated show. And, and it definitely shows. That's all I can say. Absolutely. And I've also got to say, you know, we almost glossed over uh, the rise of Vindicta, but uh, Crisis go back Point, that's right, Crisis Point, you touched on it. Not only was it an awesome nod to the movies, 
but I gotta say, like the freaking quality of the video on that, where they made it look like it was in the eighties with like hair on the film and yep. you know it just incredible is all i can say labor of love for sure yeah yes uh yeah for sure uh the episode was great this trailer is a neat little parody of that you know it's like a parody on a parody uh which is just hilarious and mm-hmm. and i'm glad they went through uh the effort to make this you know it kind of reminds me of when um on older pixar movies how they would make uh, like little end credit special feature type things, mm-hmm. like fully animated, fully voiced little shorts like or like bloopers, whatever. They yeah, do. yeah, yeah. The blue, yeah, exactly. The gag reels for like a Bug's Life or something. Right. And right. um, in just shows that those creators really loved what they were doing. And some seeing something like this trailer, you know, it may not be a long thing. It may not be something that took them a whole lot of time, but they they did it because they love what they did for Crisis Point. Right. And and so it's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, me too. Uh, I can't I can't get enough of that episode. And I know people have complained about this or I've heard people complain about the storyline and that it kind of takes a turn as far as Beckett's character. For me, it, it's a comedy. It was so, an important episode for her, right? <laughs> absolutely. It, yeah. It's 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 character building. It's yeah. character building. Um, and another point from that episode, and it's actually brought out in one of the special features, I think it's one of the lower dictionaries, is when it talked about the music from the series. Yeah. And the music on that episode highlighted so well because it's like he took portions of movie scores and kind of melded them together, but you know, you thought you were, you knew what the next note was that was coming because it sounded familiar and they went a different direction because he was creating his own thing too. Yeah, absolutely. And that description that you provide, Mike, is totally accurate. And it also reminds me of the score for Star Trek Picard because uh, the um, the composer there, Jeff Russo. Russo yeah, thank you. Um, he did, He, I think he approached his show in a similar way. So um, yeah, the music of Lower Decks is a great uh, dec- uh, dictionary, and to go along with that, another dictionary it focuses on the main titles for Lower Decks, which, you know, watching the first episode, I wasn't looking forward to the main titles because I just didn't really think of it uh, compared to the rest of the episode, but I ended up like laughing hysterically at the main titles and uh, for a few reasons, uh, but in any case, if you're like me and found that hilarious, there is a dictionary for you about the main titles. So something to check out. You also can't forget the autographs at the end of crisis point as well. (laughs) Oh God. Yeah. That's fantastic. (laughs) The the homage to star Star Trek, the the undiscovered country. I love it. Except they signed off as their characters instead of as the, uh, as the actors, which that's true is is almost better. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, the, well, oh. it was also because they were in the holodeck, right? So they, yeah, would they were be acting still, as yeah. other characters. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Um, and then for to round out the special features, just worth noting, uh, won't really go too much into it, but there are animatics as well that viewers can check out. And it's basically like deleted scenes uh, for an animated show. So it's really just like storyboard type stuff. It's not fully animated scenes like you would see in perhaps um, a live action show. So just something to, a neat thing to look at, um, not the selling point of this uh, home media release, but just so you know, it's there. Well, very nice. Well, he is Kyle Hadiniak. He is from treknews.net and he has joined us here on the level three diagnostic as we do a deep dive into uh, the lower decks Blu-ray release that came out uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us. And where can we see your review coming out? Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike and Jamie. You can check out Trek News' review of the home media release uh, at treknews.net. Uh, you can go there. It's probably up by the time this episode's posted. And then if you at all feel like it, go back and check out some of the reviews, uh, the episode reviews that I wrote for Trek News for Lower Decks. Um, you'll see that I... Love the show. (laughs) 
Oh, well, we really appre- appreciate you asking us to participate in this because it then spawned this uh, supplementary series on the Divine Treasury. So to channel my inner Bill Smith for all the news on all the Star Treks, yo, check out treknews.net. For now, my name is Mike, and I speak for Jamie when we say thank you for joining us on this supplementary edition of the Divine Treasury Level 3 Diagnostic, the Divine Treasury Connecting Through Collecting. Music for the Divine Treasury is provided by Five Year Mission. They're writing an original song for each episode of Star Trek. Hear more of their music at fiveyearmission.net. The Divine Treasury is a production of Coconut Media Works. Executive producers Bill Smith and Dan Davidson. For more great Star Trek discussion, discover the other shows of the Trek Geeks podcast network at trekgeeks.com or find us in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app.